Hoy en la noche del Lobo Cine os traigo Oliver Twist, una producción estadounidense del año 1933 dirigida por William Cowen y basada en la novela homónima de Charles Dickens. Esta película ha sido distribuida por Monogram Pictures. Dickens relata el drama, la infancia, la pobreza, las penalidades y desdichas que se vivían en la Inglaterra victoriana del siglo XIX. Oliver Twist relata las peripecias de Oliver, un joven huérfano y sus intentos por mejorar su vida y encontrar su lugar en una sociedad adversa. Oliver viene al mundo en una ciudad de Inglaterra cuyo nombre nunca se menciona. Su madre, hallada inconsciente en la calle y a punto de dar a luz, es llevada a un hospicio parroquial para pobres donde fallece poco después del parto sin revelar su identidad. El niño es bautizado como Oliver Twist y tras pasar sus primeros meses en dicho hospicio es trasladado a un orfanato donde los niños sufren malos tratos y reciben muy poca comida. A los nueve años vuelve al hospicio original donde se enfrenta a las mismas penurias. Con Dickie Moore en el papel de Oliver, Irving Mitchell, William Boyd, Alec B. Francis y Barbara Kent. La película tiene una duración aproximada de 80 minutos y está en versión original subtitulada al español, debiendo activar los subtítulos en la parte inferior derecha. Sin más, os dejo con Oliver Twist. Baby, my baby. Yes, 
That's your right, Miss Tony. I wonder where she came from. I found her lying in the street, sir. Her shoes were worn to pieces. No wedding ring. I see the old story. Another mouth for the orphanage. Until he's old enough for the orphanage, I'll be father and mother to him. Find your man. <laughs> Good day, gentlemen. What's your name, boy? Oliver Twist. What? Who gave you that name? I did, sir. You see, I named my orphans according to a little invention of my own. For the given names according to the month, the surnames according to the alphabetical order in which they arrive. If it's in July, it's James or John and so on. Now, this lad here come in October. O for October, O for Oliver. He was the 20th that come that year. The twentieth letter of the alphabet is T. T for twist. O for Oliver, T for twist. I calls him Oliver Twist. Simple, ain't it? Of course, I've lots of trouble with the hexes and the zeds. We understand, ain't. Mr. Bumble. You know you're an orphan, don't you? The boy's a fool. I knew he was. You know that you have no father and mother, don't you? But you were brought up by the parish. What are you crying for? I hope you say your prayers every night and pray for the people who take care of you and feed you. You come here to be educated and to learn a useful trade. And so tomorrow morning, you begin by scrubbing the floor of the workhouse dining room. And after that, Because for what we are about to receive, 
Lord, make us true disciples. Amen. Pardon, sir, but Oliver Twist has asked for more. Am I to understand that after he had eaten the generous supper the law allows, he asks for more? Bumble, lock him up. Yes, you come with me. The boy's unincorrigible, sir. Can't you arrange to apprentice him to someone? I will. What can you do for a night, any boy? What's the matter? I'm very tired and I'm very hungry. And I've been walking for seven days. Any money? Want a place to sleep tonight? I do indeed. I know a nice old gentleman who'll give you lodging for nothing. That is, if any gentleman he knows introduces you. Does he know you? And does he know me? Oh, no. Not in the least. By no means. Certainly not. What's your name? 
Oliver Twist. Who's there? The Dodger. Who's the other? A new pal, Oliver Twist. Uh -huh. This is him, Oliver. My friend, Mr. Feigen. Pleased to see you, Oliver. All of us, ain't we, my dear? Yes, right now. Dodger, fetch a plate for Oliver. Silk Yankees, every one of them. We have to have our silk wipes, don't we, my dear? <laughs> Drink it, Oliver. Good for you, my dear. Good for you. My dear. Hello. The time was only up this morning. Hello. Hi. 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 Where do you think the gentleman's come from? I... I don't know, sir. <laughs> Never mind where I came from, young fellow. You'll find your way there soon enough. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you've been working this morning, my dears. Mmm. Ain't they lined beautiful? Oh, what an ingenious workman. Oliver, wouldn't you like to make pocket handkerchiefs as easy as Charlie Bates? Very much, sir, if you'll teach me. But <laughs> My dears, shall we have a little game? I do. Just to amuse Oliver? I do. Hey, Oliver. <laughs>
Sorry, sir. Oh, I beg your pardon, sir. <laughs> Who's there? Nancy Sykes. Oh, come in, Nancy, darling. Hello, Fagan. He's been drinking again. You better let him have it. Hello, Charlie. Hello, Dodger. Oh, yeah, Nancy. A new pupil, my dear. Oliver. This is Nancy. Hello, Oliver. Hello. Not another penny until he cracks that crib. All right. Especially the Dodger. He'll make you, my boy. He'll make you. Oliver, would you like to play that funny game? If you please, sir. <laughs> now, <clears throat> see if you can take it out without my feeling it. Eh? <laughs> oh, slowly. Uh, slowly. Artistically. <laughs> Good boy. Good boy. Here's a shilling for you. <laughs> Here it is. Thank you, <laughs> You'll be a great man one day. You'll live in history, Oliver. What's history? <laughs> I did that. I knocked him down. Right. It wasn't me, sir. It wasn't me. I didn't do it, sir. I didn't do it. Come on, get up. Oh, don't hurt him. I won't. You know, I'd rather not appear against him. It was only a handkerchief. Sorry, sir, but you'll have to. I kicked the bookstore, sir. Boy. I saw it all through the open door. But there were two other boys, Mr. Brown, though. They, but they were the real thieves. But this boy was only confused and started to run. Oh, well. Oh, come on, get over here. Would you like to come home with me? Yes, sir. 
Cab. Where is he? The cop has got him, that's all. What the devil's going on here? Come on, Bullseye. Come in, dear. Treating the boys again, are you? Right on. If I was one of them, I'd have cracked your head open long ago. Shh, not so loud, Mr. Sykes. Oh, Mr. again, eh? What do you want now? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> you haven't poisoned it, have you? Where's the new boy? The copper's got him. Well, he might say something to get us into trouble. No. That boy won't squeal. Well, if he ain't squealed, and he's committed, there ain't nothing to fear until he gets out again. Just the same. Somebody has to go to the police station and find out what they've done with him. What do you say, my dear? She'll go, Fagin. No, she won't, Fagin. Yes, she will, Fagin. Thank you, Giles. They told me my mother died when I was a baby. That's the truth, sir. Every bit of it. You're not going to send me away, are you, Mr. Brownlow? Of course not, dear. Unless you give me calls. I never will, sir. Uncle dear, it's tea time. Oh, that's good, Rose, dear. My cousin Agnes. Look. What is it, Uncle? Oh, nothing, nothing, my dear. Excuse me, sir. It's Mr. Grimwig. Oh, that's nice, child. Uh, pardon me. Uh, Mr. Grimwig asked me if we were going to have rock cakes for tea. And when I said yes, he said he'd stay. Oh, won't you stay, dear? No, Uncle, we'll have tea in the sitting room. Come on, Oliver. Good afternoon, Rouse. How do you do, Mr. Ah, Grimwig? It's a big boy, how are you? So, this is the little boy who's been ill, eh? Huh? Hmm? Oliver? This is Mr. Grimwig. How are you, boy? Pretty well now, thank you, sir. <laughs> Come along, some tea. Yeah. 
Nice looking boy, isn't he? I never see any difference in boys. Who is it? What is it? All you know is you picked him up on the street. I know more than that. I questioned him and found him a very nice little fellow. Truthful. And quite different from the average boy from the workhouse. Ah, you're a sentimental old fool, sir. Mm. I beg your pardon, sir, but these books. Haven't they gone back yet? I'm sorry, sir, but... Oh, no, it, it's all right, Giles. It's my fault. I quite forgot. Oh, and his bill, too, and he's been so patient. Why don't you send Oliver with him? He'll deliver them slightly. Giles, ask Master Oliver to come here, will you please? Oliver, dear, you remember the bookstall? Uh... Oh, yes, very well, sir. Well, here are five pounds. You are to say that you have come to pay the four pounds that I owe, and you'll get one pound in change. I'll be back in 20 minutes, sir. him back, do you? Don't you? It's exactly ten minutes past four, old friend. to see you looking so well, Oliver. That's mine, Fagin. Uh -huh. Hand it over. Fancy, that ain't fair. It ain't fair. Nimble with your fingers, ain't you? Yeah, you keep the books, Nancy, if you're fond of reading. Please send them back. Please send them back. Don't think I stole them. Uh. Of course we'll send them back, Oliver. Of course we will. Never lose faith, my friend. I did once. You mean your daughter? Yes, Agnes. Your queen is in danger. But you were right about her husband, weren't you? Yes. He's dead now. And uh, Agnes? Oh, I... I don't know. She 
going stark mad. No, I ain't. Keep still. No, I won't. What do you think of that? So you wanted to get away, did you? What a fine actress you are. You know who you are and what you are. You're a fine one for a brat to be making a friend of. I know, I know. Bill, please. You stay out of this, you blooming hypocrite. Nancy. Just be the age I want when you got me. to bed now. I suppose he'd better not wear his best clothes tomorrow, Eddie. Oh, oh, certainly not. By no means. I want to see Mr. Brownlow, please. He's not at home. I'm Mr. Brownlow's niece, Miss Maley. Oh. Well, I've come to return these books and this money. Oh, won't you come in? Won't you sit down? I don't understand. Uh, well, I'm putting my life and the lives of others in your hands. But before I speak, I must pledge you to secrecy. You have my word. I... Uh, I brought the books and the money back because Oliver wants Mr. Brownlow to know that he's not a thief. But why didn't Oliver come himself? He's in the ends of peace. But why are you? I'm one of them. I have been, ever since I was Oliver's age. And I want to save him if I can. Who are these people? Where are they? I can't tell you. Not now. But why if... No, please. Please. My uncle will be back very soon. Please wait. No. Then let me bring my uncle to you. He'll know what to do. Any time, any place. Won't you please? Very well then. Next Sunday night at 12. And every Sunday after. I'll be walking on London Bridge. Certainly you can trust me, Mrs. Corney. You know as much about me as I know about you, my dear. I need money bad, Mr. Fagan. And they all tell me you're the man to come to. Mm. Depends upon what it is and how much you want for it, my dear. I'm a businessman. Kept it all these years. I knew the time had come when someone would... Toby, see who that is. Well. Tools ready, Toby? Oh, 
All right, Phil. It's worth three pounds to me, Mrs. Corney. Not an eighth any more, my dear. Oh, no, Mr. Pagan. Half of what you're able to get. He'll give plenty. He's a rich man. Hello. Who's this? You drive a hard bargain, Mrs. Corney. Anybody can steal, Bill. But when they want to sell, they've got to come to Fagan. got over. The women? What's happened to you, Toby? No go. Such silver, too. Such silver. Pagan, is it worth an extra 50 if it was safely done from the outside? Then I need a boy. A small boy. Nancy, fetch us a jug of beer, will you? Go on, Fagin. You needn't mind me. Tell him what you were thinking. <laughs> You're smart, Nancy, ain't you? <laughs> ain't she, Bill? Uh, she's a clever girl. An honor to her sex. I wish it was all like her. Go on, get him ready. Oliver, you to get up straight away. You're going out. Are you going to help me get away? Yes, dear. But this isn't the time. Promise me, Oliver, that you'll do exactly as they tell you, won't you? And remember, whatever happens, you're not to blame. Good night, Nancy, my dear. Good night.
Everything clear, Chitley? All in bed and the lights out. Keep watch. Any sign of a light in the upstairs windows? Give us a whistle. Here. Take this. And when I put you through that window, go straight ahead until you come to the street door. Open it quiet. Yeah. Don't be frightened, miss. I got him. Why, it's just a little boy. Doctor, run! Rose, bandages! Edwin! Hot water! Boiling! Oh. Oh, you know what I'll do here, you... How'd you feel, Bill? Uh, never mind me. Give us a hand here. Get me off this blooming bed. Where's the gin? Please, Bill, you've been very ill. Don't drink anymore. You're not going to be out on me tonight, are you, Bill? What is today? Sunday. I've been nursing you for weeks, Bill. You've been awful sick. You wouldn't have done what you've done just now if you'd known that, would you, Bill? Well, then... No, I wouldn't. Lie down, Bullseye. What's the matter? Don't you know the devil when he's got an overcoat on? Well, Bill, 
how are you, my dear? None the better for seeing you. <laughs> Have a drink, Pagan. Uh -huh. There. That'll be comfy. Heard anything about Oliver? Oh, he's all right. Only a scratch. Lucky for me. It would have cost me a pretty penny if he'd kicked off. Cost you? How? I've got something here from Oliver's mother that'll bring me hundreds when I'm ready to part with it. And so? Such things keep well with Fagin. I want him back. Forget it, Fagin. He's better off where he is. I've got more reason now than ever for wanting him back. Hello, past 11. Time for me to be going. What are you doing with your things, John? I want a breath of air. I'm going out. Nancy, you ain't thinking now. Thinking of what? Well, ain't I? A staunch a girl of living. I'd have cut her throat long ago. Right, Bill. Right. A bit pale, ain't you, Nancy? How'd you do? We waited for you last Sunday night. I couldn't get away. I was kept by force. It isn't easy for me to leave unless he knows. But tonight he was drunk. Dead drunk. Have you any news for us? Well, only this. That Fagin carries round his neck something that belonged to Oliver's mother. Then it is your duty to give this thief up to the police. No. 
No, I'll never do that. Never. Oh, but this that Fagin has. Oh, if I could only see it for one moment, perhaps I could. If I can get hold of it, I'll bring it to you. If I do this, you won't turn it over to the police, though. Not any of them. You have our promise. Can't we do something to help you? Oh, there must be something. Think now. Help? No, nothing. Nothing, thank you. Well, I... I must go now. We may be watched. Oh, no. No, please. Oh, pretty well, then. As you wish. God bless you, Nancy. Thank Good you, ma'am. Good night. And she didn't see me. I know it. You saw her face clearly. You're sure it was Nancy? Quite sure. Get your coat, Charlie. We're going to see. She... I have nothing against you, Bill. Well, that's lucky for one of us. Come on, open your mouth. Say what you gotta say. Suppose that lad over there... Supposing he was to squeal on us. Going to the right people for the purpose. Having a meeting with them. Painting our likenesses. Telling where we could most easily be taken. Suppose he did all that. What then? I'd crush his skull under the heel of my boat. And if I did it, I that know so much and could hang so many, I'd beat your brains out. I'd have such strength. And if it was the Dodger, I don't care who. And if it was her, what do you mean? Charlie, come here. Tell me that again, for him to hear. Tell your what? About Nancy. You followed her? Yes. To London Bridge? Yes. Where she met two people? So she did. A lady and gentleman she'd gone to before of her own accord, who asked her to give up her pals, which she did, to tell them what house we met at, which she did, what time we went there, which she did. She did all this of her own accord, without any threat, didn't she? That's the way it was. What did they say about last Sunday? They asked her why she didn't come. She said she couldn't. Why? Why? Tell him that. She said she couldn't go out without telling him where she was going. And tonight?
night. She got him drunk. Dead drunk. My men go. Bill! Bill! Let me out. Don't talk to me. It ain't safe. Not too violent, Bill. Not too bold, Bill. Crafty. Crafty. Get out. I like the lamp, Bill. Leave it me. There's light enough for what I gotta do. Bill, why'd you look at me like that? You may have I won't scream, Bill. Not once. Tell me what I've done. You know. Nothing to hurt you, Bill. So help me God. You was what? Every word you said was heard. Let me know that I was true to you, Bill. True to you, hear me? I'm not ready to go yet, Bill. Anything doing in town, Ben? Uh, talk of a murder, that's hey. all. Horrible murder to us, too. Who done it? A man by the name of Sykes. They'll get him, too. Took his dog along. So they got Fagan. If they can prove he's an accessory before the fact, he'll hang. How in the world did he uh, through the cellar window? Where's the other? Done away with himself, maybe. Mm. 
must for let him in. No help for it. How did he get here? Hello. Just now. Where's Fig? They've taken him. Well, why don't you say something? You gonna sell me to the police? Do I stay here until this man hunts over? Stay? If you think it's safe. It always has been. Is, is she buried? Why do they keep such ugly things above the ground? What's that knocking? There's no knocking, Bill. Not a sound. Give me an answer. Chivalry. Dodger. Don't come near me. Nancy. Poor Nancy. Listen, you two. I'm not afraid of him. If they come here, I'll give him up. Do you hear me? I'll give him up.
Fagin. Fagin. That's me. An old man, my lord. A very old man. Somebody's come to see you. What right have they got to butcher me? Who are you? What do you want? You sent for Oliver Twist. There's something you want to give him. It's a lie. It's a lie. You're on the verge of death, Fagin. Now, if there is anything you can... Give it to him, and he'll do it. I know he'll do it. Oliver, what a little gentleman. Come here, my boy. I'm not afraid, sir. Really. There's a little present for you, Oliver. See there. Whisper, Oliver, dear. Take me outside. Outside. That door first. And if I tremble when we pass the gallows, never mind. Hurry, Oliver, hurry, softly, softly, not so slow, faster. It's time. We'll go home now. Poor Mr. Fagan. Won't they forgive him, Miss Mary? They have forgiven him, Oliver. Just now. Look, Mr. Brownlow. There's writing inside the ring Mr. Fagin gave me. What does it say? Philip 2 A G N E S. You're going to keep me with you. Always, Mr. Brownlow. Of 
Of course, Oliver. Always. 